Okay, welcome back. We are here once again for round two of the Definitive Edition show match. Joining me once again, Sijin, one of the lead developers for Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. Glad to be here, Zach. Awesome. <laughs> so we have two players, two famous players. I think this is best of... I mean, we had good players so far, but this is really... Am best. I hyping it up? Yeah, like, am I hyping it up enough? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Let's this might be, you know, world class. It will speak for itself. I think this is nothing on the finals. We've got the one and only Timotheus versus the one and only Ornlu the Wolf. And the crowd goes mild. <laughs> 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 we have one, one guy. Okay, well, uh, they're going to be launching the game up very soon. Um, and really, you know, this is an opportunity for us to, uh, to talk about the game. Um, and obviously ask Sijin lots of questions. Um, I actually will really briefly, bring, I just minimized the chat, I realized. I should probably bring that back up, but you know what? We've got a chat over there, so I think we're good. Yes. Um, wait for the game then, and once that starts, we're gonna ask all the questions and uh, see the spectator mode in action as well, which I'm looking forward to. So uh, tell us anyway, but while we wait for this to come up, the guy's just getting ready on the stage. What has it been like developing the game? You know, obviously it's been a long process. How has it been for you guys? It's been a big process, uh, for, first and foremost. Uh, it, it's not really just one game you're doing, uh, remastering. It's, it's actually six games you're remastering. It's like every game that, uh, sorry, every expansion that came out with the game over all the years, it basically added up to six expansions. And so it's like remaking six games is quite a bit of content to redo. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, obviously, um, when DE was announced, a lot of questions about whether or not, okay, is the game going to feature yes. all of the expansions? <laughs> is it just going to be, you know, the base game and then the expansions would come later? And would they even be sold as extra expansions? But no, it seems like um, everything is going to be included. Everything, here, and we even awesome. made another expansion, so it's... <laughs> yeah, I have a whole new one on top, right? Which is awesome. So uh, just waiting to see if the game is ready. Uh, the guys may have had some technical issues over on the other stage. Um, they are setting up for the first time. Believe it or not, they uh, had to go and sit down, plug in a random keyboard, and yep. hope for the best. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, we're actually going to play this through the um, online server uh, system. Yes. So it's going to be through the lobby browser. Um, and obviously with DE, there will be the new sort of dedicated servers that come with that. Uh, maybe talk to us a little bit about dedicated servers, what that means for multiplayer in, in DE. Okay, yeah, that's, so that's that's something that a lot of people wonder about. Like, what does it actually mean for the game? And is it actually the magical solution that a lot of people <laughs> expect it yeah, to right. be? Uh, so, so what it actually does, the, the dedicated server system, is like uh, you kind of connect to a server, the host decides which server you're on, and each player connects to that, mm -hmm. and then you kind of play the game. So what that means is if, if you host a game in, uh, let's say, Western Europe, and somebody from Australia joins, the Australian player will still feel a high ping mm -hmm. because he's in Australia. So, <laughs> I mean, right, yeah. whatever tech we come up with, there is still the distance that needs yeah. to be covered. Uh, but other than that, if the game then, uh, the delay that the Australian player will feel, all the other players will not feel that. While in the past, in the original version, as soon as one player would have lag in, the, in their game, everybody Everybody would starts to lag. Exactly. Everyone starts getting that. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean. Yes. And obviously, dedicated servers will help to alleviate that quite a bit. Oh, yes. Um, and obviously, that's a big step up for most people who are, are used to playing with the old networking and all that stuff. So yes. that's, that's awesome for competitive environments as well. Obviously, you can be on a server in, I don't know, Western Europe, and you can play against people in the same region, and it's just going to be super smooth. Oh, yes. Yeah, but then obviously, if you do have someone who comes in from like Australia, for example, mm -hmm. they're the ones who are going to have to suffer because of that, rather than um, all exactly. the players in the but game. But then not yeah. everybody suffers, and in the past, sure. Uh, I mean, they would, they would suffer in the past, anyways. Of course, so yeah. It's just kind of lesser evil in a way. <laughs> it's, it's the lesser evil, but yeah. that's just the distance that you just cannot resolve. But on the other hand, if they would then play on the Australian ah. server, they would be in the advantage. So yeah. there you go. Awesome. So uh, I think I may have made a mistake there. I think I was looking for the game rather than looking to spectate the game. Oh, yes. I may have been on the wrong tab, <laughs> um, but we will have it going. So I just saw him rehosting. So uh, I think they've got the, the memo and we'll get this going in a second. Um, yeah, indeed. So we, yeah, we apologies for the delay, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we don't only have a, a lobby browser, actually. We also yeah, have we a spectator right now, yeah. browser. Uh, 
uh, where you can see all the games that are currently going on. So this, this is actually the beta. Uh, you can see some of the servers on the right. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that makes it a lot easier to find like, oh, hey, this is a game that's hosted in uh, Western Europe. Yeah. I want to play in Western Europe server yeah. and you know you're going to have a good game. Yeah, and the big thing here, of course, is that spectating does not take a slot oh, yeah. in the game oh, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so you can actually have a 4v4 and still watch your friends playing that as well. Oh, yeah. So uh, I believe they're re-hosting the game, uh, waiting for it to come up on the spectator overlay. And maybe we could show this actually, because I think people will be interested to see the, the sort of spectator system. Oh, yeah, um, sure. So yeah, so over on the left, obviously, we have the lobby browser where you can, of course, uh, search for games. We can see Timotheus's game right there. I think he's waiting for his opponent to join. And once we yeah. see that disappear, then <laughs> we'll know they're <laughs> started. Yeah. Uh, matchmaking, of course, that is now going to be baked in. And yes. matchmaking will allow you to just like quick search, basically. It's basically quick search, indeed. And we have like a random pool of locations that we will pick, uh, pick from. Mm -hmm. uh, what you can do is pick your civilizations, but other than that, you have the location pool. Uh, and then, of course, you can filter on, hey, do I want to play with random map or uh, that match? Yeah, awesome. Um, and you can invite to games. So I guess you can invite your friends here uh, as well. Of yeah. course, yes. So, <laughs> as always. Uh, Spectator, obviously, over here. So we can see all the games that are in progress and obviously filter through them as well. Uh, Timotheus's game has just started. So we're going to go straight into it now. Yes. Apologies for the delay there. Um, we just had a little bit of a, a hiccup with me. Being on the wrong menu, good start, <laughs> but we're in. Uh, Bulgarians versus Tartars, two of the brand new civs, spawning down to the southwest of the map in the curly yellow. It is Timotheus, and up to the northeast in the blue. It will be none other than Ornlu the Wolf. Indeed, and uh, one thing that I immediately want to point out, they're playing on 1.7 speed. There was a lot of questions about that, like, hey, what's going to be the speed on, on DE? Mm -hmm. uh, and we're, we, yeah, we, we touched it up a tiny bit, now it's, it's more... Uh, what the competitive community expects from the game speed. Uh, 1.5 is still an option, so yeah, if you just want to play like that, you can perfectly do so. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, um, like it's called classic speed up here. Uh, I think that is that planned to be like the default, or are you planning to, um, you know, sort of make the, the 1.5 the default? Uh, I think that the plan is to make 1.7 the default, actually, mm -hmm. and then uh, 1.5 will be an option uh, as well. Okay. I'm just going to get this right because uh, last time we had a little bit of stuttering, but it was actually because we were trying to replay the game too quickly and yes. we were like <laughs> trying to go too fast, then it was slowing down too fast. So if I get this just right, uh, then uh, we should just have this really smooth spectator experience. And uh, that's something that I'm sure will be, will be sorted out by the time the game uh, is, is released in November. But uh, yeah, Timotheus then playing as the Bulgarians. Let's talk about these new civs a little bit. Uh, talk us through what the Bulgarians are good at, what they're all about. Uh, so the Bulgarians, they, they really have two specialties. I mean, they have a lot of uh, things to play with, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, the Military-wise, they really focus on infantry and heavy cavalry. Their unique unit is uh, heavy cavalry that actually turns into infantry. So uh, <laughs> Hopefully we'll see that this game. <laughs> uh, that would be nice to see that in action. It's actually really fun because it's, it really can mess up a battle and really turn the tide in a battle. So it's a really fun unit to play with. Uh, and additionally, they also have a lot of fortifications. So they have a special fortification building, actually. Uh, that is only unique to the uh, Bulgarians, called a crepost. It's kind of like a half half a castle. Is I think the best explanation. Yeah, for right. It. <laughs> so it's 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 half the the cost of a castle. It's kind of half the strength of a castle, and it can only make uh, sorry, can only train the unique unit. It cannot train trebuchets. It cannot do uh, the researches. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so it's kind of balanced around that. Yeah, like exactly. it's, it's sort of yeah, a little bit cheaper, but you know, also not as powerful as exactly. a result. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, we'll get on to a little bit of balanced discussion later yeah. on. <laughs> uh, but before we do that, we'll take a look over the other side at Ornlu, um, obviously playing as the Tartars. Give us a little rundown of the Tartars. Uh, so the Tartars, um, they are more a civilization that's focused on uh, yeah, m mobile uh, play. So they have a lot of light cavalry and cavalry archers in a way. Uh, more similar to the Huns and the Mongols. I mean, they, they kind of came from the same area historically. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of uh, why they will also have a rather familiar play style in that sense. And uh, yeah, I think the, the biggest bonus, but we won't really see it here, is that they have a, a, a hill bonus. Uh, I mean, every civilization has a hill bonus if you fight uphill. Yes. But for the Tatars, it's even more. It's like 25% more. 
additional uh, hill bonus. So exactly. obviously hills are going to be super important. Um, and there are a few hills on this map, few, so yeah. you know maybe maybe we'll see that. Um, looks like it's reasonably flat over on this side, but yeah, there's definitely some yeah. big hills in the middle here. So we'll see where they end up having little battles. <laughs> Obviously, the the ability to zoom in and out natively is, is yes. nice <laughs> as well. And uh, we saw earlier we we had another show match earlier on today, and we did see that uh, players were playing at different zoom levels as well. So it's very much sort of you know personal preference. It's too. very personal. Yeah. I mean, there's so much that you can now. Uh, customized to your wishes. Uh, also the UI size. Uh, we know that there's so many setups mm -hmm. and settings and monitors and, and uh, ways that people like course, to play. So yeah, uh, yeah. We, we do try to provide yeah. uh, all these options. Yeah. As well. We actually have this at, um, I think it's 100% uh, UI size right now, but you can shrink it down. You can make it larger as well, uh, exactly. which is obviously great if you have many other size screens, as you yes. say. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we'll get into this game. Obviously, they're going through the dark age right now. We can see these new uh, sort of spectator features, which are baked in as well. Uh, we can see some information down here on the bottom, as well as the uh, current technologies and queue, units in queue, yeah. uh, as well as what age, and, and we can see them advancing up. Uh, and you may notice here on the right side, uh, right here for our yellow player, uh, he has a villager in queue, but he also has Loom queued up. So yes. he's able to actually uh, put Loom in queue with the villagers, whereas before you would have to wait for the villagers to finish building, go back to the TC, queue yeah. Loom, and, and you know this now you can just do it all at once. Yeah, we have so many queues added to the game. It's actually currently insane. We have the, uh, what's it called, the mixed queue, as you just mm -hmm. described. So you can do text and units at the same time. Uh, you have the global queue, which I'm not sure if, if players have on right. Oh, no, we have we don't have it on right here. If we switch to the player point of view, we can probably see it. Yeah. But basically it gives an overview of like everything that's going on in your empire. Uh, it shows like everything that you have queued in terms of uh, buildings, in terms of units, and like that you can kind of see at any point what's going on everywhere. Yeah. Um, then we also have uh, a new farm queue. I mean, we already had the farm queue, mm -hmm. but now we have the automatic farm queue uh, where it will just reseed farms for you. Uh, as just as, as soon as they exactly. run out, they just go straight back, you know, exactly. get to work. You've got thousands of wood in the bank. What do you need permission from me <laughs> for? Uh, just build your damn farm. Yeah, please yeah. do it for me. Please <laughs> do it for me. Yeah. Um, so that it, again, it's it's only optional. Yeah. So uh, it, it's there for people who want to use it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's off by default right now. Uh, but yeah, to be honest, when I play a game, the first thing I do is turn that on. So okay. there you go. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm just going to keep pausing here because we're, we're running a little bit faster than the, the players at the moment. So yeah. when we when we unpause, we, we're, we're running nice and smooth, but then we yeah. go a little bit too quick. Um, but yeah, so players about to reach the feudal age. And uh, you can see here the, the scout getting a little bit of arrow fire from the TC, which is glowing. Why is yes. it glowing? Because it's he's doing a research. Exactly. Uh, now it's stopped glowing. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's kind of to show you the player, what's going on, uh, or sorry, what's what's uh, in what building you're researching a technology, and to be clear, this is not something that you can see uh, from the enemy. Yeah. So there's so no. You cheating. can't scout <laughs> your opponent's TC and no. see. Oh, they're they're researching. They're going up to the next stage. It's really just for the player uh, and their benefit as well. So yeah, yeah that's really nice. Um, obviously, new architecture sets that come with these uh, civilizations as well. Uh, the Tatars and the uh, Bulgarians hailing from from sort of different sort of regions. Not not. Yeah, they're, they're, they're similar region, but different architectural, I think. There, there was uh, quite some uh, distance between both civilizations mm. historically. So also uh, in terms of architecture, we had to make a difference between those two. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we I, I just love the Tatar set. Uh, we'll definitely see more of that once we get to the castle age, because that's where it really shines, uh, literally. So yes, we'll see that. <laughs> <laughs> when w if we reach castle, we will certainly certainly see that. And uh, yeah, we got a little bit of a scout rush coming out from, from Orly now, actually, preparing some scouts at the moment to to head across the map, which is yeah pretty open at the moment. Uh, Timotheus trying to sort of wall across the front with those buildings, a stable of his own. Um, I believe, I is it the Tatars who have the bonus to the scouts? Uh, we would have to check that because so many uh, civilizations in DE, uh, sorry, in the, in the last council, so the new expansion that mm. comes with DE, uh, have focus on light capital or have a bonus that goes for light capital. Right. So um, definitely Tatars uh, have one. And I believe there is an, an uh, upgrade in the castle in uh, for the unique technologies that also applies to the Bulgarians. Yeah, I mean we can actually uh, check the tech tree as well. We will do that a little bit later on because okay. uh, right now, scout raid coming in to Timotheus's wood line. Those villagers there having to go back, but there is a spearman just in time to repel those scouts away. 
and it uh, looks like he'll have to just resort to attacking the house. That's, that's okay. <laughs> uh, second best. I mean, maybe you'll get him housed in, in 10 minutes or so. <laughs> but yeah, obviously, uh, a lot of focus here on the multiplayer, but there's many people out there who you know, want to know about the single player as well. If you don't have anyone to play against, or you know, you're maybe not comfortable with going into a multiplayer game, uh, what is the AI going to be like when this game launches now? Uh, so the, the AI, we, we really try to improve it in, in two points, really. Uh, one thing is the AI is just a lot stronger again, uh, if you compare it to the HD version, especially if you compare it to the 99 version. Um, so that's one thing. But also we try to make it more uh, capable of doing different things and also make it way more interactive. Uh, so the big thing, if you think about the original game, it had those few commands where you can like, ask, hey, gold please, or create X villagers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and attack now. And often it didn't really even listen to those commands. Uh, sometimes it did, uh, but we really tried to expand on that so you can really customize your gameplay. Okay. Uh, and I think at this point we have like 80-ish, I would have to count, it might be more, it might be less, 80-ish <laughs> uh, commands where you can really, in detail, tell the AI what to do, like, hey, attack with champions or do a fast castle. Right, or, right. Yeah. Okay, cool. So you can actually really sort of give them a lot more direction and oh, maybe yes. sort of, you know, you can almost strategize with your, your, oh, your yes. AI teammates. Which you is can really, really nice. make a team effort, a team strategy. Yeah, and, you can, and can you then give that sort of different uh, commands to different AIs on the same team if they were on your, your team? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, indeed. Awesome. So it's not that everybody is all of a sudden going to yeah. be a fast castle. So yeah. Yeah, you can really sort of feel like you're uh, controlling this. You're the commander. Yeah, the you're the Lord's commander. commander yeah. Supreme leader of the <laughs> of the battlefield. You can absolutely do it. That's very cool. It's a very immersive thing. And uh, speaking of sort of AI, obviously that sort of leads us quite nicely into the campaigns. Uh, there will be three new campaigns, I believe, coming with this. Yes. Yeah, so from the four new civilizations, which are the Lithuanians, the Bulgarians, the Kumans, and the Tatars, uh, three of them have a new campaign, uh, and they all kind of focus on the history. Uh, that's yeah. The, the theme is the last cons, so they're all kind mm -hmm. of in that. Uh, in that uh, theme, yeah. Okay, and I think you mentioned earlier on today as well that uh, even the Forgotten Empires uh, campaigns had a little bit of a do-over and a little bit more polish added to them as yes. well. So, uh, yes, they have voice acting now. Uh, <laughs> after <laughs> quite some time, it was one of the most requested uh, yeah, changes to the Forgotten campaigns for sure. Um, we also try to look at all the other campaigns to see like, hey, well, what can we do to make it a bit better? Mm -hmm. uh, some of the uh, the good old campaigns, we try to keep them as much as possible. Like you go back to Saladin or John of Arc, like you will completely recognize them. But on the other hand, you might also remember Barbarossa, where mm -hmm. you had to uh, invade Italy at some point. But you're invading Italy, but all the civilizations are German, they're Teutons. So right, we right. <laughs> right. So you can go back and sort of I iterate exactly. on that, and make improve that further. Yeah, that's exactly. Really nice. So now you invade Italy and you fight against Italians. So that okay. little things like that a bit go more a long realism. Way. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know if it's possible. Um, maybe Ham in the office can actually give us some player point of views as well. Uh, I believe we fixed that as well now. So uh, I don't know if we can maybe switch in. There you go. We can see Timotheus there in the yellow, uh, playing on. Uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, sorted. So uh, he's sort of like pushing out. Uh, we can see it from his perspective as well. So obviously you can see the caster UI previously. Now you can see the player UI. He's actually on the way up to the castle age now. And he's sort of playing at this sort of more zoomed in mm -hmm. uh, level, I feel. But uh, up to the top, you can see where his resources are. Uh, really nice sort of handy sort of, you know, quality of life features. Um, we have the number of villagers on each resource displayed there in yeah. the UI. So it's really easy at a glance to sort of see what's going on. It's one of the things that is in every RTS game nowadays, and people just expect it to be there. So yeah, we added it to Age of Empires 2 as well. And actually, one of the other things that you can clearly see when switching between the point of view and then the screen that we had, and something that the chat is also asking, like, hey, that it, it looks different. And it's mm -hmm. because we have so many graphical settings that you can turn on and off. Yes. Uh, they're all playing without Bloom. Uh, we have Bloom on on mm -hmm. our screen. So it's, it's one of those settings like, just turn it on or off as you wish. Like if you think the game looked better with or without, just pick whatever you want. Yeah, absolutely. So it's all about sort of like customization, giving the, the players the ability to sort of play the game the way they want and what they, they're comfortable with. Um, speaking of sort of quality of life as well, we, you know, we mentioned earlier um, in the stream today uh, that uh, the ability to now shift Q is, is built in. So instead of, you know, sort of queuing a house and then, you know, not telling, tell, being able to tell them to go off to, um, 
you know, build a lumber camp and then go and mine some gold and then do this, that, and the other. You can actually sort of pull yes. those things up. Yeah. So we have command queues now, uh, l like we like to call it, and it's it's yeah, it's in every RTS. It was never in Age of Empires, and now we have it as well. I mean, you had like the shift to to kind of set waypoints, but now you can actually do, yeah, interactive waypoints. Uh, yeah, so yeah a bit a bit more, and then it's just expected nowadays. Cool. Yeah, it's sort of bringing it up to the standard of what you'd expect from like a modern RTS rather exactly. than, you know, a game that, you know, let's be honest, 20 years old, it, it, some features are certainly outdated. And oh, yes. I, mm -hmm. I know that a lot of people who come over from, you know, StarCraft community and things like that, they, they kind of expect those features. Yeah. So it gives them the ability to sort of get into the game, maybe pick it up and feel more comfortable with it as well. I, I also notice it myself, like if I play another game for a while and come back to Age of Empires, I'm like, oh, geez, all these little things are missing. Yeah. You, you kind of get into it again, but it's nice to have them now. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, it looks like we've got uh, Audley here actually pushing out some archers. Um, he is in the Castle Age, uh, as is the uh, his opponent, Timotheus. Look at architecture. All the buildings just suddenly like coming yes. to life. <laughs> you know, castle Age comes in, it gets a lot more colorful. And there's his uh, Crepost as well, which is this sort of you know, cheap castle, um, lower uh, damage and, and HP and all of that, uh, but also costing quite a bit less. And obviously the Bulgarians also 50% cheaper uh, stone cost on building town centers. So yes. really sort of a big boomy sieve, uh, able to plop down lots of TCs quickly and get their eco rolling. Yeah, it kind of also fits with their tech tree, which is not very broad, but kind of focused on like heavy food units. So it, it, it also like this big synergy of bonuses, uh, w which we try to do for all sifts. And uh, yeah, I'm really curious to see how the pro players will handle the Bulgarians as well. Yeah, we've got some cavalry archer coming out now for Onlu as well. He's got a good mix of units going on. I don't think he managed to get much damage done in the feudal <laughs> age, but switching into the cav archer now. And uh, the Tartars, uh, very good cav archer sieve. We can also see the Tartar um, ar architecture yes. here, which is just, you know, really blue and bold and stands out really nicely. It's really nice. It's my favorite new set uh, yeah. by far. <laughs> or awesome. favorite set in the game uh, all up, I would say. Yeah. We've also got the Connex here, the uh, yellow unique unit. Yes. Um, and uh, he's sort of, uh, they sort of look like they have uh, flails or something. Sort of, uh, they do have flails. Yeah. So th it's like flail cavalry. Um, they don't really have any specific bonus. I think strength wise they will uh, be rather close to like knights, and once you upgrade them, mm -hmm. it's more like a uh, cavalier. Uh, but yeah, the, the strength is of course when they die. And let's see if they will actually, uh, yeah, will actually see them. Many in of them get picked off here. <laughs> uh, we have got the crossbow upgrade in for Onlu, so we'll see if he actually knocks one of these guys down and yep. if he continues fighting on. Um, obviously, when they do get knocked down, they're not going to be sort of as strong, they will be nerfed. But as yes. you, you said quite rightly, it does bring up a lot of questions about counters here. We're gonna see the first one going down perhaps uh, as these cavalry archers are going at it, but they're sort of not focus firing. No, no. So he, th they're all yeah, doing yeah. quite well. There, there we, go. we go. And he's got back up. <laughs> he's dismounted Conic. <laughs> Only 45 HP, but certainly, you know, if you, like you said, if you have those spearmen, for example, exactly. going at the cavalry, it's a counter to the cavalry, but then this guy pops back up with a sword and suddenly your, uh, your counter isn't so effective. Exactly. It, it did look a bit sad because it was kind of like trying to run and uh, catch up with his friends. <laughs> like, wait for me, I lost yeah, my right. horse. Oh, poor guy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it looks like... Um, it's going to be a really interesting unit, and you know, it, it's so interesting to me to, to see how you continue to innovate and come up with these new ideas, because obviously uh, with 31 civs in the game, you do have to continue to add new and interesting uh, elements to the civilizations. Uh, yeah, that's an awesome, innovative thing. Um, and I believe the, the Tatar's unique unit as well, uh, fantastic at raiding. And it's yes. sort of designed about being, uh, being this raiding unit, uh, which can actually sort of generate gold by, yes. by just damaging stuff. Which so is by awesome. attacking, yeah. so just any, uh, sorry, any attack will generate gold when you use the Keshik. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it actually applies to when you're attacking uh, walls. So oh, okay. You, you can't just abuse it like yeah, that. Like, right, oh, right. there's some stray walls here. I'm just going to attack these yeah, and then yeah. gather gold. Yeah. You've got to be careful with that, right? I mean, yep. that's sort of a balance thing. And, you know, touching on balance as well. I think you said there's going to be quite a few balance changes to the base game as well. Yeah. And, and I think it's, it's like there's two very important things to remember here. Like, these are new civilizations. Uh, on launch, they will be a bit stronger. And that's fine. That's that's actually how it needs to be. It has been like that since the Conquerors. Mm -hmm. um, when a new civilization comes out, people love to try them out immediately. Yep. But then they have to fight against 
older civilizations which have been out for 20 years and they have been practiced for 20 years. So then it's really hard. Like you need to have a tiny edge uh, to leave some room for experimenting. And that's kind of what we try to give here. But all the civilizations are designed so we can easily uh, make tweaks to their bones. So we're, we're actually uh, very, very confident about the, the civ designs and, and the ability to, to nerf or to boost uh, after release. Yeah, whatever's needed, really. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we can probably go back into the players' POVs as well. See some micro action here. Um, they are in at 60 FPS as well, so you should get the full quality from them. And uh, now we see only here trying to run back. Next, they've got two lives, so uh, does have to be very cautious about that. Um, but yeah, uh, I wanted to go into some, some other things as well here. Obviously, we, we've touched on balance and uh, the multiplayer experience. Um, for those wondering sort of like what that's going to be like when they get into multiplayer, is it going to be the, the classic ELO system? You know, how that's going to, how's that going to work? Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a still this good old uh, ELO system that you see in all the other Age of Empires games. So it will feel immediately familiar for yeah, everybody. And that's kind of also the, the, the whole thing about the Definitive Edition. We want to make sure that people feel familiar uh, as soon as they join the game. Like if you, if you just look at all the units of buildings, it's immediately recognizable. And that's very, very important as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I think we should stay on the player POV because we're, we're sort of a little bit behind and the player POV is, is gives us a really good insight into what they're doing as well. Uh, it also allows me to not spectate and sort of actually yeah. focus a little <laughs> bit more on, on asking questions because uh, we want to read the chat and get your questions in as well. So if you do have any questions in the chat, we'd love to answer them and, you know, do... Uh, our best to, to give you the answers you're looking for. Uh, Orlu here, struggling with those mangonels still a little bit. They are hitting home. Uh, but keep in mind, the uh, Cav Archers for Orlu as the Tartars, do you get that 25% bonus when they attack downhill on top of the 25% they would get already? Exactly. Just a shame that there's not really a just lot no of hills, hills around yeah, here, right. so we can't really use it. But uh, um, yeah, there's just nothing around this town that's where he can abuse that adventure. Uh, yeah, just kind of looking at the chat right now, uh, is the UI customizable? Um, well, it's certainly scalable. Um, it is, scalable. is it possible to move any of the like the the, UI, uh, the mini map, for example? Uh, it's not natively supported, no. but uh, what is supported is that uh, the UI is extremely moddable now. Mm. Uh, so it's all uh, currently in a format that's super easily moddable. You can just jump in. Uh, I'm actually quite looking forward to seeing UI mods. Uh, it's yeah, it's right. non-existent in H2 at this point. So Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's one of those things I'm just curious what people will do with it. Yeah, and, and speaking of modding, of course, uh, right now you can see that the large trees, uh, most people <laughs> who've been watching the stream today will have been seeing small trees. Um, you know, you, I think you said something along the lines of, you know, th these uh, mods will be available in the game, um, or at least very easy to get hold of. Yeah, so uh, the, the two most popular mods, we saw them today, Tiny Trees and No Snow. Uh, I both have them working on my computer already, mm -hmm. so that's something. <laughs> they will exist uh, if we will build them straight into the game or if we will just add them to the modding. Uh, the mods that you can just download and put into the game, uh, yeah. we don't know yet, but they will be available uh, right away from launch. Awesome. And uh, as far as sort of you know, continuing on with modding, um, for existing mods, is it going to be possible to sort of keep those alive? Is it possible to sort of convert them over for DE? We try to keep that as much as possible. I mean, if you convert uh, graphics mods, for example. Oh, I think we have a GG already. Oh, oh. <laughs> he's saving. He's saving. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we, we try to make sure that uh, people yeah. can uh, convert their mods over. Uh, as much as possible. Uh -huh. uh, then a lot of other mods uh, don't need converting. So if you have a map, uh, sorry, uh, campaigns or uh, maps or uh, 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 scenarios, they will just work. Yeah, a lot of love for Timotheus there, yes. getting the win against <laughs> Orly. Uh, congratulations to him. Uh, but yeah, lots of questions there, hopefully many answered. Uh, GG's for him and uh, yeah, thanks Bert, really appreciate it. Um, yes. We can answer some more questions from the chat if sure. we can see any. Um, obviously, we, we're trying to cover as much as possible here, but we do have limited time. Um, if you see anything in the chat there, please feel free to, to answer away. All right, so one question I see right from the start, can you change gate direction with the mouse wheel? Yes, you can. <laughs> it will finally be there in the E as well, so yes. Um, does Elite Keshik dismount the Elite Infantry? Um, it, it's not a Keshik, it was a Conic that uh, throws the guy off the horse, yep. but it will be an Elite guy that gets thrown off the horse, so yes. 
uh, single player for beta, sometimes we have uh, campaigns unlocked in the beta. So uh, yes, it's not everything, but some campaigns are unlocked in the beta. Um, yeah, there was a question about the game speed, if it will be 1.7, and yeah, this yeah. game was on yeah. 1.7. One that so that yes. game right there was <laughs> 1.7, <laughs> and uh, I believe that will be default for multiplayer as well going forward, so yes. you'll be able to jump in, uh, but obviously you will have the option to, to revert it back to 1.5. Um, we did also sort of touch on AI as well earlier on. Um, you said there would be a new difficulty level, so uh, oh, above, yes. <laughs> above hardest. I mean, th there's so many things to touch on here. Uh, th this game has so many elements, and almost everything has yes. been improved <laughs> or worked on in some way. But uh, yeah, there will be now an expert mode uh, for the AI. Uh, we will. We have the extreme. Extreme, yes, rather. Extreme. Yes. Extreme. Uh, it's a bit more fancy. Yeah, it's, it's basically kind of to split up the difficulty levels because we know, especially the casual players, uh, they play on easy. They're like, hey, I, I know Age of Empires. I, I, I kind of, kind of want to go to moderate, but the jump from easy to moderate was so big that yeah. it was like, oh. This is not. Yeah. And then, you know, you, you get this courage, you don't mm, want to play again. Absolutely, yeah. You've got to break it down a little bit. Exactly. Uh, make sure that the players, you know, have this sort of gradual increase in difficulty. So it makes a lot of sense. Um, obviously, uh, the game will be released in November. Yes. The date? 11-14. 11-14. Yes. It couldn't get much better <laughs> than that. And it's 25% off if you already own HD edition. Exactly. What will be the price for non-HD owners? Uh, it will be 20 euros, uh, so it goes to like 15 euros. I think in pounds it's 15 or 16 pounds. I'm okay. not sure exactly. <laughs> I need to look it up before I say something wrong. Cool. So. That's like incredibly reasonably yes. priced, really. <laughs> I mean, most people are like, oh, well, what's it going to be? But, you know, especially with the 25% off, you have, if you have HD already, um, it's pretty much a straight upgrade. I think you'd be mad not to. Especially because uh, an ex expansion in the past was 10 euro. Yeah. So now you get for five euro more, you get the Last Cons expansion and then all of the everything else. So yeah, yeah which it's is, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with this price yeah. point. <laughs> so is there a very big push to sort of bring the community onto into one place here? Uh, yes. I know you, you've got the, the cross-play compatibility as well. So if you're playing on Steam, uh, you can also play with people on the Windows Store. Yeah, so it, it's really the goal to, to bring everybody together. And that's why we also try to improve like everything a bit in the game. Yeah. Uh, and it's also very important to note it's like it's not done yet. Mm -hmm. Like even on release, the game is not done. We're going to keep on working on the game because the game is yeah. so big. People just want more and more and more. Yeah. And that's fine. I mean, the game is already so big, but there is indeed so much room for more little improvements, mm -hmm. more content. Probably not more new sifts, but that, that's, yeah, that's we, okay. Yeah, we might be pushing <laughs> it now. I mean, what we'd be up to 35. 35. Uh, yeah. It, it's, it's, yeah, probably getting really close to sort of... We're, uh, we're starting to run out of world history, basically. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> I mean, it's just all-encompassing. It, yes. it has everything you could possibly want. It's awesome. Um, but yeah, obviously... It's awesome that you're going to have that cross-compatibility and, and trying to bring people into one place is, is always good. And great to hear, of course, that there will be more coming in the future. So yes. with the release of DE, that is not the end. There will be more Oh, no. This is uh, support starts on day one, basically. So uh, it will. If, if you're thinking like, oh, this little feature, can we have that like just posted on the forums? Uh, we actually have somebody working full time at the moment okay. to get all the feedback from the forms <laughs> to the devs on the tracker. So awesome. <laughs> that's yeah, we, we take it seriously. That's <laughs> good. Yeah, I, I think that's really important. Obviously, the community is very important. It's great for you guys to be here. We had the DE demo over in the yeah. tent as well, so that's really nice. It was really nice to see. Yeah. I'm, I'm really sad to see that my record on the demo has been broken. But oh, okay. did you really? <laughs> yes, Foghorn actually broke it. Damn. So congratulations yeah. to him. Yeah, congratulations <laughs> to Foghorn, by the way. He's, he got the top score yeah, on the <laughs> DE uh, challenge mission at the studio, which was really cool. He even beat Tato, so yeah, yes. really well this <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you, Bert, of course, for being here to answer some questions. Glad to be here. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that preview. Um, I just realized we didn't show the tech trees. We will do that one more time. If we can go back into the game, I will just bring up the tech trees for the, uh, not for the Aztecs, but for the <laughs> Bulgarians. So you guys can see what they're all about. Um, infantry and cavalry civilization. Um, militia line upgrades for free. Town centers, 50% less stone. Can build the Krepost, uh, which we saw in that game. And of course, the Clonic Unique Cavalry. Stirrups as unique tech, giving their scout cavalry line extra uh, move speed, uh, sorry, attack speed. And then uh, Bagains giving the militia line extra three armor. As well as blacksmiths working 50% faster, I can see this sib being a really 
really strong sort of early. Um, they have a lot of options, yeah. Yeah, so exactly. definitely see that. And then, of course, we have the, the Tatars as well, which we'll take a quick look at here. Um, there we go, Cavalry Archer Civ. We did see Onlu trying to utilize the Cav Archer in those games, but it just couldn't quite make it work. Yeah. Uh, but it's really awesome for them. The sheep contain 50% extra food, which you know, makes your start really cushy as well. Makes for a good start, yes. Absolutely, and uh, units doing 25% additional damage when fighting from you know, at the, the, the top of the hill. Yes. Makes things like Acropolis, for example, an incredible Very map different map, them. yes. Mm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. So hills making, you know, becoming really important for them. Parthian Tactics for free, of course, really synergizing with that Cav Archer speciality, um, as well as that Keshik, which is their unique cav raiding cavalry. It's all about the raiding with the Tartars. Um, and also then the unique techs, Silk Armor, giving their Scout Cavalry line and Cav Archers extra Pierce Armor, which isn't too strong, but it's definitely like a, it synergizes as well. Exactly. That's that's the whole point about those civilizations. If you think like, hey, this is, this is completely overpowered or this is completely worthless. Yeah. We will see. You know, we will see on the... Uh, on release, what we need to tweak, and we, we also noticed this in the past when uh, the Rise of the Rajas came out, the last expansion. Yeah, so many people were saying Viet Vietnamese completely overpowered. <laughs> so it was like, turns out they're not. Not so quite. <laughs> not quite. So one final question here. We're still on the tech tree because uh, a lot of people are wondering about the uh, supplies and where's tracking. Like, yes. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, tracking is gone. Tracking uh, is gone. Tracking is gone. It's not completely gone. It's now an automatic upgrade. Mm -hmm. uh, once you get, I think, the fuel age. Uh, but uh, yeah, the tech itself is gone. We replaced it with supplies, which makes your uh, militia line a tiny bit cheaper, in food at least. Uh, we're still playing around with the numbers, like, hey, should we have it in the castle age? Should we have it in the feudal age? Uh, we're now experimenting with this. Again, this is a beta, yeah. uh, but we kind of feel like this is in a good uh, place. Uh, gods don't have it, so no gods worries. Gods do not yeah. have it. Yeah, gods don't that's have a good it. job. <laughs> and uh, for the Malay, we had to make a, a little tweak to uh, the, the forced levy as well, because you don't want right. 40 food champions. Right. <laughs> of course, that would be insane. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, we also have the Step Lancer here, which is the uh, unique cavalry for the Tatars and the, uh, is it Cumans? Yes, yep. exactly. There we go. So they will have the Step Lancer. Yep. Uh, we will see how that one uh, turns out to be. It has like one range for a cavalry unit. Uh, but it's, yeah. it's one kind of those of things. A bit like Kamiyuk style, yeah. you know, infantry, like melee, but with range. Exactly. Yep. But it's unlike Kamiyuks, they don't have like the extreme bonuses. Uh, yep. So yeah, right, that's right. Awesome stuff. Well, I think that about wraps it up from us. Thank you guys very much for uh, tuning in for this. Thanks again, Bert, for, yep. for taking the time. Uh, we are going to be raiding Prismata now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for their support. Uh, everyone who's supported the event, we really appreciate it. Uh, obviously, uh, thanks to Microsoft for helping us to put this prize pool together. Thank you to Be Quiet. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Thank you to Be Quiet for jumping on the sponsorship as well. And of course, Prismata, uh, the card game that is just too good. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> check it out. Uh, links are all below the stream. You can check that out right there. Uh, but that's it from us, guys. Thank you so much. We're gonna throw the raid over to Prismata now, and we'll see you all next time. When I first picked up Prismata, I was playing a lot. 325 hours, yeah, and that was in 45 days. Pretty much everyone I know from a competitive gaming background immediately fell in love with the game. You're gonna love it.